Welcome to our October What's in Bloom. So every month we feature some of the plants that are in bloom in that particular month. And uh, so we have a little map that shows where those are in the garden and uh, visitors can go around and see them. Now we're limited what we can put on that list because it has to be things that are in continuous bloom for a long period. Now there, there are many things in the garden that have much shorter blooming periods that consequently don't make it onto what's in bloom. Uh, First, we have a uh, desert daisy. This is Balea multiradiata with the yellow flowers you see here. Now, there are lots of desert daisies, but many of them are ephemeral uh, flowers. In other words, after a rain, they come up and they quickly bloom, and then they go by and, uh, and the show is over for the year. Uh, but there are some that have staying power, and one of those is uh, Balea multiradiata from the southwest United States and also in northern Mexico as well and it blooms over a very long period of time with these beautiful bright yellow flowers. It makes a nice textural contrast with the solidity of the cacti and agaves and other things that we have in the bed. And we're very happy with the just sheer amount of flowers that it puts out. This shrub in front of me is Pavonia missionum. Uh, it comes from uh, South America, from southern Brazil and southward to Argentina and uh, it's in the hibiscus family so the flowers do look very much like a little hibiscus if you look at them up close uh, it's very free flowering it's been in flower now for several months and uh, we're very happy with its performance here at the bancroft garden it seems to do very well in cultivation this shrub here is called caliandra sierra star it's actually a cross between two different caliandras one that occurs in southern california and the other farther south in baja california and uh, it's notable for the beautiful shock of red stamens that really makes uh, a wonderful effect. It catches the light nicely. Almost looks like it might be related to a bottle brush, but it's not. It's in the pea family. And uh, it flowers over a long period of time in the uh, warm months of the year. And uh, it's uh, really a, a very uh, cold tolerant and drought tolerant plant. Good garden subject. This little yellow plant here is Zinnia grandiflora. Grandiflora means big flower. And I suppose compared to the size of the plant, it is a big flower, but most of us wouldn't consider that the largest flower in the world. But it's a wonderful bloomer. It, it has tremendous numbers of flowers all summer long. Uh, yellow with a little orange eye, uh, which is the orange pollen. Uh, it's native to the western United States and southward into northern Mexico, a big distribution. Uh, it's, it always stays short like this, but just flowers and flowers to beat the band. Justicia is a member of the Acanthus family, Acanthaceae, and this particular species Justicia California is a California native. Here we have a form with red flowers and another cultivar with yellow flowers called Tecate Gold. And both of them are very drought tolerant and uh, respond very well to cultivation, flowering over a long period of time and uh, lovely narrow tubular flowers that are visited by hummingbirds. Agaves are popularly known as century plants. And they occur from the southwest United States, southward all through Mexico and Central America, and down as far as northern South America. Uh, Mexico has the greatest number of species, including this one, Agave potatorum. Uh, it's found especially in the state of Oaxaca, also just north of there in the state of Puebla. And it's one of the agaves that's single. In other words, it doesn't make any offsets. And when it flowers, that's the end. So this is its swan song. The flowers aren't quite open yet but well on the way and you can see the tall stalk with the little clusters of flowers very typical of many agaves and uh, because this is the end of its lifespan the leaves are already starting to shrivel uh, and once the flowering is done that will be it for this agave this plant is dazzlerian wheeleri native to arizona and southward into mexico and it belongs to the family nolanaceae the nolina family and plants in this family have separate male and female plants. So this particular plant is a female, and we actually prefer the females in horticulture because their flower stalks last a very long time while the seeds are developing, 
and in this case the developing seed pods are greenish but in some other cases they are reddish but always very showy for a long period of time. The uh, leaves are long and strap-like but with little teeth along the edge and actually quite sharp teeth along the edge. Uh, these plants are very easy to grow and as you can see over time uh, a clump develops with multi-heads and that means we have multiple inflorescences coming out of the clump. Dazzlerian huileri. A lot of the aloes that we grow in California come from South Africa, and there's a reason for this. Aloe is a widespread genus in uh, not only Southern Africa, but Eastern Africa and uh, across the Red Sea into Arabia and across the Mozambique Channel to the island of Madagascar and the Indian Ocean. But many of the species are quite tropical. So the ones from South Africa being farther away from the equator are more likely to weather our winters here in California. This one here is Ello reitzii. It comes from northeastern South Africa, and it consistently blooms at the end of the summer. So in September and October, we'll see this plant in flower with these uh, bright neon flowers. The uh, buds are on the red side of red orange, and then they lighten to a lighter orange as they open. Uh, this plant is pollinated by sunbirds. The narrow tubular flower is made for the sunbird to insert its beak into to get the nectar. This plant is Rucellia equisetiformis. It comes from Mexico and has the common name of firecracker bush. And uh, then the species name equisetiformis uh, indicates that it looks like a horsetail. And, and if you know that plant, uh, the foliage is reminiscent of that, but it's not related. Uh, it is very free flowering through the summer months. And here we are in October and it's still going strong. Uh, very attractive to hummingbirds because of those tubular flowers that have nectar inside, uh, the sort of thing that hummingbirds gravitate towards. This tree is Prosopis glandulosa, known as honey mesquite. It's a common desert tree in the U.S. southwest and southward into Mexico, and has the fine leaves uh, that many uh, desert members of the pea family have. And uh, it is uh, in it's fruit stage now with these uh, wonderful seed pods. You can tell it's in the pea family. The uh, pods look very much like pea pods. Uh, up here you can see the green ones and then here uh, they turn uh, sort of a tannish yellow color when they're ripe and they're actually quite nutritious. Native peoples would uh, grind them to make a flower and you can really eat them right off the uh, tree. They're slightly sweet uh, but not very much and quite nutritious. This plant is also in the pea family. This is Erythrina bidwillii. It's actually a hybrid between two Erythrinas, one found in uh, North America and the other in South America. And uh, it grows lushly as a bush all summer long. And then in the wintertime, we cut it completely back to the ground and it re-sprouts and does this all over again every year. Uh, Erythrina is a very widespread genus found in Pacific Islands and uh, in uh, Africa and in the Americas as well. And uh, the name Erythros or Erythrina comes from Erythros, the Greek for red. And not only are the flowers often red, but so are the seeds. Uh, many plants in this genus have beautiful red seeds. This one, Erythrina bidwillii. This plant here is agave striata from northeastern Mexico. It's not your typical agave. It doesn't have wide leaves, uh, very narrow leaves, sharp tip but narrow. Uh, this is agave striata, comes from northeastern Mexico. Uh, in addition to having narrow leaves, it has a very short flower stalk compared to most agaves. Uh, what's notable about this particular one is how bright green the flowers are, not a common flower color. Uh, it, is not necessarily green. Other forms of the species could have purplish flowers or yellowish flowers, but this one really quite vivid green. Uh, it's a widespread plant in northeastern Mexico, agave striata. Opuntia is a large genus in the cactus family, ranging from little short plants that are only a few inches high all the way up to large tree-like ones. This one is Opuntia leucotrica from central Mexico, one of the tree-like ones. And the name leucotrica means white hair and that's because the old spines persist and as the uh, pads harden into stems and a trunk uh, it retains those uh, white hairs and gives it a shaggy look. 
Uh, Opuntia is a very widespread genus, ranging from Canada in the north all the way to Argentina in the south, the biggest distribution of any genus in the whole cactus family. And we really appreciate them in the garden because they do double duty for us. In the springtime, making a display with their flowers, and then in the fall, again, making a display with their beautiful fruits. These ones are edible. They're quite small, maybe a lot of trouble to get the spines off in order to be able to eat it, but tasty nonetheless. Opuntia leucotrica. The tree above me is Seba speciosa, or the old name Corisia speciosa. It's also called the silk floss tree. That's because it has large spherical fruits with a cottony substance inside. That cottony substance used to be used for all kinds of things, from making bandages to stuffing pillows and whatnot. Uh, not so much used anymore for those purposes, but a beautiful ornamental tree. It comes from South America and does well in the tropics all around the world. Uh, we're at the northern end of where you can grow it. Our tree barely survived our cold winter of 1972, uh, but it came roaring back and here it is in flower today. It uh, flowers every fall from about September to maybe early December. Seba speciosa. This aloe is aloe cryptopoda. Cryptopoda means hidden foot. And that's because of these bracts that cover up the foot of the flower, uh, which is maybe a detail most people wouldn't even notice. Uh, but it's a rather widespread aloe in the northern part of South Africa and in neighboring Botswana. Um, it has different forms. This one is a single plant and it flowers in the fall. We have another plant that is a clustering plant that flowers in the wintertime. But in any case, it has these tall branching flower stalks with these beautiful reddish flowers and is very attractive to hummingbirds. Now, it comes from Africa. Africa doesn't have hummingbirds. The birds that visit it there are sunbirds. But we don't have sunbirds here. We have hummingbirds. And the hummingbirds like all the same things that a sunbird likes. And they always come to visit this plant. Plants in the genus Echeveria mostly come from Mexico including this one. Uh, this one is actually a cultivar called lace, but it's a hybrid of Echeveria gibiflora, which is common in the mountains around Mexico City. And uh, some plants have a little bit of waviness to the leaf, and that trait has been bred uh, to be exaggerated, as you can see in these extremely frilly edged leaves of Echeveria lace. Uh, it is coming into flower. It tends to flower in the fall and winter, but it does not actually have open flowers at the moment. Uh, but a very stunning plant and uh, easy plant to propagate and one we've had in the garden here for many years. Even the grape family has succulent members. This one here is Cyphostema jute from South Africa or actually from just north of South Africa and Namibia in Africa. And you can see the grape-like fruits on it, but these are not edible. They're actually poisonous. But like a grape, it has little teeny tiny flowers that don't amount to much visually. And it's really the fruits that are the showy part of it. But even more than that, the swollen stem and these great big showy leaves. So these leaves are deciduous. In the wintertime, they'll all be gone. And you'll just have the big fat trunk left over the winter months. Uh, it's not all that cold tolerant. So that's why we have it in this bed, which gets covered in the wintertime. But Cyphostema jute is probably the most cold tolerant of all the Cyphostemas, uh, notable for their amazing fat trunks. I like yellow flowered aloes, and I've done a number of hybrids uh, with yellow flowered species. This is a hybrid between two plants. One is Aloe hildebrandtii from Somalia, and the other is Aloe laborana from East Africa and uh, both have yellow flowers and so of course the offspring does too. It's really remarkable that this plant grows here because both of those countries are not exactly in the cold winter area of Africa. Uh, however, it's uh, persisted here for many years. We do have it in a bed that is covered in the winter so that gives it some protection, but it has this wonderful display of yellow flowers, oftentimes repeat blooming in the fall months. The genus Bulbine in the Asphodel family 
has a very wide occurrence in South Africa. Uh, there is only one species we commonly see in gardens in California, and that's bulbine frutescens with cylindrical leaves. But this one is a very different creature. This one is bulbine latifolia, meaning wide leaf. And indeed, it has very wide leaves, look almost like an aloe rosette, except without any teeth at the edge. Uh, the flowers, however, give it away as a bulbine. They, they are yellow with fuzzy stamens, which is a characteristic of bulbine. Uh, this is a very free flowering plant, oftentimes has a succession of uh, blooms one after the other for months on end. Grevillea is a large genus in the Protea family, and they come from Australia, uh, all over the continent. There are ones from Eastern Australia in the summer rainfall area, ones from Western Australia in the winter rainfall area, but they have these wonderful flowers that are dominated by their long styles, the uh, red uh, parts that stick out here. Uh, they're very attractive to bees, which always visit this plant. And uh, this is a relatively new cultivar called King's Fire. Uh, King's Park is a park uh, near Perth in Australia, and that's the source of the name. Uh, but it hasn't been in cultivation here in California for very long. However, it's done so well for us, we can't believe it. It almost blooms nonstop throughout the year with these wonderful orangey red flowers. Grevillea King's Fire. Well, thank you for viewing our What's in Bloom October episode from the Ruth Bancroft Garden. Of course, there are many things that we have here in the garden that we do not show in What's in Bloom, such as the cacti, whose flowers only last a few days, not long enough to be on a month-long list. And uh, there's always something new going on at the garden. So by all means, come to the garden and visit it yourself in person when you can. And all different seasons have different things to offer. So come back and come back often. Thank you much.